Well, I uh, got the back seat out, and my my relays that have on-off switches don't fit this. Maybe one of them would work all right. I don't know, but these have four prongs on them. I don't have anything exactly like it. But I checked from the negative, and I found I have about 13 volts going to here. And then I took the relay, and I took a couple, couple jumper wires, and I think it was these top two. I ran 12 volts to those, and I could hear it clicking. So I'm just really sure my relay is okay. But when I turn the key in the car on and off, on and off, there's no sound coming from the fuel pump. So I think the fuel pump decided to go bad. I even have some voltage like 11 and a half, almost 12 coming back to the fuel pump. And uh, so now I'm going to take the fuel pump out and then I can hook it up to my battery, see if I can get it to work manually like that. To take this out, you've got to take this cover off. The cover is just kind of glued on with this black stuff here. It's real sticky. So I just took a trim tool and pried it off. And mostly I used my hands, got that off of there. Once you get that off, you slide it over out of the way as far as you can because this wiring harness goes through it. And, ooh, gotta be careful. That black stuff's everywhere. This is the connector I took off. It goes right here. Like so. This is the release tab. If you're on the driver's side, it'd be on your right. Squeeze that tab. Show you here. That releases the clip and then just wiggle it off. And then that comes out of the way. Then I took a detail brush. And I dusted around it really good. And I took my shop vac, which I just bought at Walmart for $29.99. It's a really good deal. And I sucked all the dirt out of there. Now it looks like you can use about a... I just watched a video. I think it's a 7 millimeter, but it might be 8. Or a Phillips screwdriver. I have a Phillips screwdriver attachment for my cordless drill i'm just going to use that and then i've got to figure out how a guy takes off the fuel lines i'm assuming maybe you pull this release forward and then i don't know i have to figure that out because i'm not familiar with these but it kind of looks like this is a safety catch so maybe oh I guess you pull it up and then maybe the fuel line will come off. Let's see if we can get that to come off. Up. Nope, that's not it. Down. That's not it. It's got to be up. Let me play with that for a minute. See if I can figure out how to take those lines off. So I figured it out. Got a little fuel spilled there, but not much. There was actually a little bit of pressure there, so makes me wonder. Um... You pull up on the orange clip, and then on the side of that, there's a little blue tab. There's one on both sides. Squeeze those tabs in from the sides, and that pops right off. I'm going to do the same thing, hopefully, with the other one. Get that out of there. Then I'll start taking the fuel pump out, see if we can figure out what's going on. Now, there's a couple clips back here holding this wiring harness down. I just put my trim tool underneath there. And popped up on it and they came right off that will give me a little more slack to get this out of the way I quit putting it in that black junk maybe guy could take this clip out of here maybe there's some more room in there for wiring but I think this will get it out of the way far enough oh probably gonna have to take that off somehow too I don't know if that's the vent, maybe that's the return line. It's probably the return line. This one had pressure on it, so that must be the one going to the engine. This is probably the return for the over when it has too much pressure. Sends it back here. Um, I'm guessing. Anyway, I don't know. i got to try to see if I can get this off one way or another. Okay. In order to get this hose off, it just goes into this plastic bracket backwards. 
you can kind of see the clip on the bottom. So I took my pry tool, my trim tool, I got on the back side of it and pushed it down and that forward a little bit and it just popped out of there. So now that hose is out of the way. Now I can take out, I think they're eight millimeter if I remember right. I'll get my sockets in a minute. I guess sockets are a Phillips screwdriver. Let me get that ring off of there. Okay, so they're seven millimeter. So I'm gonna use my ratcheting cordless drill and get those babies out of there, hopefully. Oh, I was wrong. It's an eight. I forgot which one I tried. I'll try that again. Eight millimeter. Oh yeah, they come right out. I watched one video and the guy said, make sure you don't lose these. I think that's probably good advice. Otherwise, you're going to have to figure out where to get them. I don't know how hard that would be. Seems like I'm probably missing one on the other side there. Get out of the way there, fuel line. Sorry, you guys can't see. Oh, man. This is the fun of filming. There we go. Okay, I think that gets them all. I'm going to grab my magnet to pick those up out of there. So I've got this extendable magnet. And you would not you would probably be surprised how much I have to use it. I'm always dropping nuts and bolts and screws and this helps me to recover them. Sometimes without having to bend over. Sometimes they're in places that's really hard to reach. And of course the, the ring is metal. So it's wanting to grab that before it grabs anything. But I'm getting them out of there one at a time. One last one I think. Is there another one last one? Oh, there we go. One last one. Okay. Now, the thing we got to do is get the ring off of everything else. And then I'm assuming we'll have to twist that water pump. Now, this should just come out of there because everything is removed. Probably going to take two hands. Hang on, guys. Okay, there's the ring. This hose is kind of in the way. This connector's kind of in the way, but just wiggle everything around and it'll come off. And you gotta go over the top of this connector here, but I got it off of there. Now it might be just come out of there loose. Oh yeah, I can smell gas and it's loose. So I'm gonna grab the vacuum and I'm gonna vacuum a little bit more now that the ring is out of there. Get some more of this dust out of there before I pick it up. So I can see there's four wires here and I'm assuming the yellow and black one are going down to the pump and the brown and black one, the smaller ones, are going to the fuel sending unit. Tell your gas gauge what kind of gas you have. I'm going to figure out, okay, so the back two, as you're looking at it, closer to that nipple over there, are the ones that go to the pump. Even though there's five slots, there's only four wires. Now I can see the back two are the fuel, are the power. So I'm gonna apply power to those and see if this pump works. So give me just a minute. I know, it'll be instantaneous for you guys, but it's gonna take me a few minutes to get hooked up. I'll be right back. Well, I have mixed feelings because I think it's the fuel pump. And I jumped positive and negative off the battery onto these two back prongs or connectors and my test light lit up so there's continuity but the pump does not engage so that tells me that the motor's bad the electric motor that pumps the fuel so I'm going to get a new one of these ordered and then I'll install it it's going to be pretty easy 
there's a rubber gasket that slips up from the end here and then that seals off the top and then that'll just set back down in the gas tank and then hook everything back up and I think I'm just going to go ahead and put that back in the gas tank and uh, just for safety measures so I don't have to open 20 gallons or 16 gallons of gas sitting back there to catch on fire and blow up I'm going to try a different jump wire also real quick just in case the one I have with a test light, which is this one, isn't uh, sending enough electricity to kick in the fuel gate. So I'm going to grab another wire real quick. Well, my theory was correct. I hooked up a couple of heavy gauge wires, that black one and that red one, and I can hear the fuel pump working. So that tells me that it's not... It's either not getting enough power or it's not getting the turn on signal something maybe it's the ground i'm gonna have to do further investigation to find out what's going on uh, i checked the relay and it's clicking on and off but maybe and i switched relays so it's got to be in the wiring someplace i'm gonna have to do some more research and i'll get back to you guys but evidently my fuel pump's not bad so that's got to be an electrical problem someplace.